Hello and welcome to this video on DB2 and the File Manager Service Provider for ZOS Connect. The File Manager Service Provider for ZOS Connect now supports REST API access to DB2 data on Z. For more information about the File Manager Service Provider, go to our HCL Products and Platforms channel where you can get an overview of the product and its installation. There are also videos on Z Data Tools APIs that leverage File Manager function from high level languages as well as Java and Swift. The File Manager Service Provider supports two methods of accessing data, generic and specific. The generic method involves using service archives provided by File Manager. This method provides a generic mapping of file data to a prescribed response format, that is one format for all data sources. When using generic mappings, customers do not need to create their own SAR files. Alternatively, customers who require response mapping specific to a data resource can create their own SAR files using the provided File Manager Build Toolkit plugin. APIs created using SAR files built by the Build Toolkit plugin map data responses according to a given File Manager template. When using specific mappings, customers must create and manage their own SAR files using the File Manager ZOS Connect Build Toolkit plugin. The Service Archive for DB2 Generic Data and the File Manager Build Toolkit plugin are provided in the Service Provider Bundle FMNZCEE in the SFMN SAM1 dataset. The contents of the bundle can be extracted using the Unix System Services PAX command. Once extracted, the provided service archives and build toolkit plugin can be copied to the environment where you will create your ZOS Connect APIs. The ZOS Connect Enterprise Edition API Toolkit feature is an Eclipse plugin that can be downloaded from IBM. Once installed, you can create ZOS Connect API projects. The API editor allows API creators to choose URL elements as well as verbs associated with API paths. Each API must be associated with a service archive or SAR file. For generic data from DB2, API creators should use the provided fmdb2service.sar archive. The SAR file prescribes request and response schemas and associates the API with a service provider. For generic data from DB2, the request requires parameters that describe the target DB2 resource, including the DB2 subsystem ID, the resource owner, and the table or view name. A file manager DB2 template name can also be provided to filter and map table columns. Operations parameters allow the API caller to identify the number of rows required and whether to start a DB2 session or reuse an existing session identified by a token. For DB2, a WHERE clause can be applied on the initial request to read data from a table or view. This establishes the result table for subsequent reads. Because some tables can be very large, a caller can set a max rows when starting a session to limit the size of the result table. The default is 10,000 rows. Prior to reading data, the request can optionally attempt to position within the result table by specifying a relative row position. When starting a session, this can establish the starting row for the result table. For generic data from DB2, the response is an array of zero or more rows. If a row is the last in the result table, an indicator is set accordingly. Each row is an array of columns, giving the name of the column, its file manager data type, its dimension if an array, its value, and a brief error text if the value could not be determined. Once created, APIs can be deployed directly to your ZOS Connect Liberty server using the ZOS Connect Deploy option. Note that SAR files used by APIs must be deployed to the ZOS Connect Liberty server's resources slash ZOS Connect slash services directory. As mentioned, reading DB2 data can optionally involve a file manager DB2 template that potentially filters and formats table columns. If you don't specify a template, all columns are returned with default formatting. DB2 templates can be created using FMDB2 option 1 or 2 after selecting an appropriate DB2 subsystem. Option 1, for example, allows you to specify the table owner and table name, as well as a target template dataset and member name. Once created, the template can be edited to filter and format columns. For example, we could deselect several columns that we don't want returned in REST responses. We can now use the template and our deployed ZOS Connect API to read data from DB2 using REST. For demonstration purposes, we will use the REST utility Postman from getpostman.com to test our API. 
All initial API requests must pass a basic authorization header. In addition, a content type header with value application slash JSON is required. Remember that as much or as little of the request payload can be mapped in the ZOS Connect API editor. Anything that is not mapped, if needed, must be passed in the request body. Using path and query parameters, it is possible to map all parameters and require no request body at all. In this example, we will pass all parameters needed to access a DB2 table called EMP with owner DSN81010 in subsystem DFG2. We will use the template we created to filter out the deselected columns and map other columns. Lastly, we will read one row and start a session so that we can continue to read through the table. When we send the request, we see the first row in the table returned. Note that the response returns rows in the generic JSON format. Because we ask for a session, we also receive a token we can use on subsequent API requests. When we pass a token, we are working with an active session, so we no longer need to pass resource or template parameters. By leaving session set to true, we keep the session active, and we can continue to read through the table rows. Once we have finished with the session, we can set session to false and indicate that we want no more rows. Now, let's look at reading DB2 data using the specific method. The specific method involves creating a service archive or SAR file using the file manager provided build toolkit plugin. The plugin works in conjunction with IBM's ZOS Connect build toolkit command line utility, Zcon BT. The Zcon BT utility runs in Windows, Linux, or on ZOS and accepts as input a properties file and generates as output a service archive file. The properties file for DB2 provides the resource information including the DB2 subsystem ID, the resource owner and the table or view name. A template name can optionally be provided to filter and map columns. If a template is not specified, all table columns are returned. The properties file also provides host port and user ID details needed to access the template and build the service archive. The Zcom BT utility uses the properties file to generate a SAR file accordingly. Remember that the SAR file must be deployed to your ZOS Connect Liberty server. Using the ZOS Connect API editor in Eclipse, we can create APIs associated with the service archive we just created. When using the specific method to access data, the main difference is the format of the JSON response, which is specific to the table or view and its columns. The API request is also different because the resource information is no longer required. It is already available in the SAR file, which as stated must be deployed to the ZOS Connect Liberty environment. And the API must also be deployed using the ZOS Connect deploy option. Using Postman again, we can test our specific method API. As with the generic method, an initial API request requires a basic authorization header to authenticate the calling user and content type header with value application JSON. Since we no longer require resource information, we can simply provide operation parameters. Again, we can start a session and read sequentially through the table or view. Note that the responses now have a JSON format specific to the table or view we're reading based on the template we provided when we created the SAR file. And a token representing the DB2 session is returned for use on subsequent API requests. Reading one row at a time, we can read sequentially through the DB2 table or view. The service provider also allows an API caller to position within the result table by specifying a relative row position. Positioning is available using the generic or specific access methods. API callers can also read multiple rows in a single request up to a maximum of 10,000 rows. When the last row is read, it is indicated as such. As with the generic method, the DB2 session can be ended by setting session to false. Alternatively, on an initial API request, the caller can specify a WHERE clause applicable to the table being read. A valid WHERE clause affects the result table for the session. If the table is particularly large, an API caller can cap the maximum number of rows in the result table by using the max rows parameter. By using positioning on the initial call, 
In conjunction with Max Rose, an API caller can incrementally work through a very large table or view. This brings us to the end of this demonstration. Thank you for your interest in DB2 and the File Manager Service Provider for ZOS Connect.